Hey y'all, what is up? Welcome back to 9to5Gamers and today is weekend review and we are doing a review of Point City. Point City is an amazing game by the way. So if you if it looks familiar, it's because it's made by the same people who made Point Salad. So if you like Point Salad, maybe you might like Point City, but let's talk about Point City today. So we'll go ahead and put Point Salad behind it just so you can kind of we'll do like a one of these things. There you go. Point City. So, Point City, let's talk about the um, setup and storage. So, setup and storage, um, the game is very easy to set up. Storage works fine because it's just a deck of cards and a couple of them. Um, but they went the extra mile. One of the things that I appreciated is that um, this is not just, sorry about this. So one of the things that I liked about the game is that, um, number one, I got uh, the expansion with it. There's like a little Kickstarter promo tiles. Um, I, I appreciate the storage because it has the places for the cards, but it also has the place for the little circle tiles, um, the objectives and stuff like that that go in the center. Not only that, but it has a little well at the bottom for the Kickstarter exclusive stuff, which I thought was really, really awesome. And uh, everything fits inside the box and uh, no issues. Setup and storage, amazing. So it gets a two for that because it is a great storage solution. Set it, setup is great. So two points for that. Um, the learn and the teach, the rule book is really, really simple. And it gives a lot of good illustrations in the rule book on how certain things work mechanically. And uh, I love that it does a very good job of explaining it. It's very easy to teach, very easy to explain and learning it was not uh, a chore. So uh, two for that because they made a perfectly great um, rule book and uh, everything just works great in this. Um, now, uh, we're gonna talk about component quality. Um, component quality is good. Um, you've got these thick uh, Point City um, tokens that if you wanna go ahead and get a look at it, this are, these are the ones that tell you like, these are like the town hall goals that you can do. They are pretty thick um, cardboard, great quality. Cards are solid. Uh, card stock is pretty solid on here. Oh, do you know what? That is one of the things I wanted to mention too, but I'll explain that maybe in the, um, in the uh, whatever you want to call that, the, the gameplay mechanics. But yeah, I think game, the, the, the quality is good. I mean, obviously they didn't, they could upgrade and make everything out of like acrylic or, you know, but I feel like that would add an extra price to the game. The fact that this game is $20 or less, um, you kind of got to score it accordingly. So I think as far as component quality, obviously it's not like you didn't get like super high quality stuff, but I think it's good quality for the price. Um, so at the price point, I'd have to give it like um, like a, a two, um, but realistically, you know, it's like a 1.5. Um, but gameplay mechanics are fantastic. One of the things that I like about the game is that it's so simple. So you've got all of the cards in this game are double-sided. On one side, it has the um, it has some kind of resource, and then on the other side, it's got a uh, production. And so, in order to put this into play, you need to pay the cost at the bottom, and then it's worth this many points at the end of the game. So this one's going to be worth like two points. Um, and for the rest of the game, it'll produce the resource in the top uh, left corner of the card. If you can see it, this one produces like a leaf. Um, and the game is just full of a whole bunch of cities and a whole bunch of um, energy cards, right? Which I thought was really, really interesting. Um, I like that they're double-sided and that they produce this. And then this is always ingenuity is like a wild resource. It counts as anything you want it to count as. They have double resources. And the cool part about it is that when you when it's your turn, you draft two cards, but they have to be adjacent to one another and you do them one at a time. Um, and if you want to take a building, you have to be able to pay the cost for it. So you could potentially take the double energy card out and then afterwards take this card, which has double energy as part of its cost and use that double energy you just pulled to pay the cost of it. So I thought that was pretty cool mechanically. Um, also, when you take something from the, the board, you create this little, grid of like 16 cards anytime you take a card um you take two cards you put the opposite there and you might say well that sounds like a bit like that's going to be a bit confusing um it can be but they give you these little tokens that remind you that if you had taken a resource make sure to put a building or if you took a building make sure you put a resource 
right? So it's got the it's got two of those, so you can place those out as you take cards to remind yourself of what goes there. Um, so I thought that was really nice. They didn't have to include something like that, but they did, um, which I thought was really cool. I thought this was really awesome. Everybody starts with an ingenuity card, so it comes with four of them. Um, and so you give these one to each player, so everybody has a wild resource to start with. Um, they have a white b uh, border so that it doesn't match up with the ones in the deck. So the ones in the deck don't have the white border, so you can tell them apart. Um, but one of the things that I loved about this is that one of the four ingenuity cards, the starting cards, has a, um, like a little person symbol. That means you're the first player. So what you would do is you would flip it upside down, you'd shuffle it, hand everybody a random card, and then you flip it over, and if you have that, then that means you're first player. That's such an easy way to choose first player instead of all this bo bogus mumbo jumbo of, oh, whoever was the last person to pet a cat. I I don't remember that. Like, And, and then there's just one person at the table. I own a cat, so I guess it's me. It's like... That's a dumb way to choose who goes first. I, it's creative, but I like this. This is truly fair. It's just random. You know what I mean? I thought this was really cool, and I think more games need to do stuff like this. Absolutely, they do. Um, but yeah, so the game is is really good mechanically. I like the choices that you make in this game. I will say that it is a bit like tough at the very, very, very beginning because it's kind of like you don't have any resources you have to just draft a whole bunch of resources before you know it there's nothing but buildings out there then you got to use those buildings and if you don't create a working engine and you try to just go straight for points it's just not going to get you where you need to go um that happened in one of the playthroughs that i had where they had been um trying to build towards um building up just grabbing points or buildings that are worth points but they didn't have a good enough engine so they didn't play it like that so yeah i don't think it's a viable strategy to just go after buildings with points on it i don't think you can actually win that way um but the engine building is really fun if you like splendor you'll like point city um because it just feels a lot like splendor where you're building like this engine that produces resources or discounts on certain things and so like i can buy this card but i'm already producing energy so it's pretty interesting there's not a lot of cards that produce energy which i don't know if there is in the game a ton of them but it for us when we were playing through it it was like man there's not a lot of buildings that create energy and those who get those they they luck out because a lot of these places require energy um it does have a turn order or turn summary card on what your turn looks like and then also it has a setup aid which tells you how to set the game up. It tells you what to take out and what to leave in, which makes the game super random, and I like that about the game is that it can become a little bit random. But um, then there's these uh, tokens that you can score, but the only way to score them is to build a building that has that top symbol, that little civic, civic building symbol, and then you're allowed to build, you know, you, you can take one of these, which will score you accordingly. So like this one will give you two points for every purple producing building that you have. So that was pretty cool. Those are, I, I like the way they did that. And point salad, that's what's on the back of the cards instead of resources. Um, the other one, it's like there are uh, vegetables and on the other side, it's scoring um, objectives. This one, it is scoring of there's there's resources on the other side it's buildings that produce resources and then scoring objectives are the tokens so i like that uh, it's a little bit more complicated than um point salad but it's not super complicated but i think for gameplay mechanics as a solid 1.5 um and then for um I think for like the fun factor theme and gameplay or fun factor theme replayability um just like point salad i could say that point salad is a game i don't play often like it's a game that does not get played often in my house um i'll break it out if i'm trying to teach somebody how to play something weightier i feel like point city is that it's a game that's just kind of like hey let me introduce you to like engine building by playing point city with you and it's like you get the concept right where you build these buildings they produce resources and then you can buy new buildings with those resources and i feel like point city does a good job in teaching what an engine building game is but i don't know that it has the longevity for me i feel like this is a game that's going to quickly be forgotten i feel like the replayability is not going to be there does it have replayability absolutely because 
everything changes every time you play it. It's never going to be the same every single time you play it. But I could just tell it's one of those games that'll just go on the shelf and just be like, you know what, this is a game I'm going to teach somebody. Um, I feel like um, the objective cards are kind of weird because you got to buy a card and in order to you have to buy a card which doesn't do anything for you except give you the symbol that purple symbol so you can get one of these tokens to get some extra points that was a little weird mechanically um i know that took that points off for that but yeah i think that um it, it's very fun like it, it's fun theming it's cool like you're building a city i get it but it's just it's not very heavy on theme and it's not very heavy on replayability fun factor it's fun but it's not like, oh my gosh, this game is like the most fun game I've ever played in my life. Um, so I'd say it's like a a one or a point or like half a point, to be honest with you. Because again, I just don't think the replayability is going to be there in this game. Like m there's about a billion people right now that are watching this video that say, I have point salad and I never play it. This is not going to change that. This will give you something fresh as a point salad game, because that's exactly what it's like. But I could see myself very easily forgetting that I even have this on the shelf to begin with. Um, but it's it's good. It's just I don't think the replayability is going to be there. I don't think it has the longevity. Um, point salad didn't either. It's it's a great game, but it's like this is only for certain people who come over the house. Because I'll be honest with you, if, if gamers come over the house, we can play Splendor. Um, Splendor Duel, right? Like, I can play something like that, which is a little bit more of a meatier version of this um, and have a great time playing it. You know what I mean? There's a ton of great engine builders. There's Earth and a whole bunch of other games that you could play potentially over Point City. Um, this is a, is a very niche uh, game when it comes to what it's here for. It's literally to teach people how to play engine builders. Um, but as an engine builder, it's not that strong against some of the other games. So the fun factor is really what affects that. You know what I mean? It's like it's not going to be the most fun uh, engine building game because that's really what it is. It's an engine builder um, or a tableau builder if you want to call it that. But it's good. Not great. I like it. I would recommend it. I think we're sitting at what, like an 8.5? Great game. I, I definitely recommend if you like Point Salad and um, you want something that's a little bit of a step up, definitely highly recommend. But um, I think objectively, this game's somewhere between like a seven and a 7.5, objectively. But subjectively, I give it an eight, 8.5. Um, I think that it's a great game. I had a great time playing it. It's a game I look forward to playing again, and I eventually will probably grow tired of, but we'll see when that happens, right? I'm not gonna call it before it's even happened. Uh, but that is Point City. So thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you've played Point City. What do you think of it? Do you like Point Salad? What do you think about having games like this in your collection? Are they games you would like in your collection? Let's have a conversation in the comments section. Excited to talk to you guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out the memberships. Three to ten bucks will get you access to early access to videos. Uh, exclusive videos, exclusive live streams, um, posts from me throughout my days when I'm doing something fun or wacky or silly and get to take the photos and send them to you guys through there. So um, that's pretty much it, man. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.